Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors of the Greyhawk Landing Community Development District. Today is Thursday, March 28th, 2019. The time now is 6.01 p.m. We're located at the Greyhawk Landing Clubhouse at 12350 Mulberry Avenue, Bradenton, Florida, 34212. President, Constitution and Quorum, we have Jim Hangle, our chairman. Mark Bush, our vice chair. Lindsey Rushmore, assistant secretary. Jeff Evans, assistant secretary. Denny Smith, assistant secretary. Audience members present this evening. We have Andy Cohen, our district council. Please welcome back Rick Schopaker, our district engineer. We have my <laughs> we have myself, Grant Phillips, representing dish manager with Rosette and Company, Ed Morrow, our field manager, Richard Wilbert with LMP, and Julianne Giello with Giello Holiday Designs. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Once again, the first item will be audience comments on the agenda. Um, the microphone will be up on the podium. The first audience comment card is Eric Lachelle, or Lashecki. Good evening. Um, I'm here to speak about uh, the security survey and what I feel as a community would benefit our neighborhood. Um, I've been living here approximately almost five years, it'll be in August, and I've seen the security come and go, faces come and change. What I see is just someone riding around in a vehicle for the most part, showing uh, presence to the community and never taking action if need be. I understand they're not supposed to take action. I've been told numerous times by them to uh, call 911 on my own, and I feel, you know, that being said, the guard, uh, the person that was here last week, uh, representing Allied, stated that no one wanted to take these positions for 9.25 an hour, which I totally agree with. 9.25 an hour is not enough, enough money to make a decent salary, even in the state of Florida. Uh, that being said, it's coming up that we may vote to give them two, three dollar raise, which I feel is just throwing more money into the wind for the simple fact that they're going to tell you to call 911 whether they're making $13.25 an hour or $9.25 an hour. Um, I feel what we need to do is some sort of uh, virtual security as well as maybe having a guard at the rec center in the pool. There it seems like most of the uh, incidents occur after hours with teenagers, uh, with school letting out two months from now. It's bad enough that we have kids that don't live in the community come and hanging out in the pools. Um, I also feel that as a resident here, right now we're all here at the meeting, there's about 40 of us in the room. Who's to say that your house doesn't get burglarized right now when you're at the meeting? The guards outside, one's at the front gate, we have no record of who came in between the hour of 6 p.m. and say 20, 30 hours when the meeting goes over. We have no record um, of a plate, face rec recognition, nothing to that effect. God forbid somebody's home gets burglarized in someone's home and they get sexually assaulted, robbed, or beaten to a pope. Then, we're gonna to go to security and see, do you have a record of anything? Security's gonna be like, what do you mean? We have no record. But, if you could go back in the time frame and see that something happened between 1800 hours and 2030 hours, then you could at least look for a plate, which will give you a registered owner. It'll give the police a lead to at least go back and have a permanent record of these individuals coming and going, no matter what entrance it may be. Um, that being said, I am a former law enforcement. I work for the sheriff's office now, and I understand that we need to have more and more patrols in the area. Working for Manatee County Sheriff's Office right now, the growth is so great out east. They are just opening up a fourth district off 70 near Lorraine, and there's just not enough manpower to do routine patrol. Thank you. Thank you. Next audience comment card I received, 705 Rosemary Circle. Hi, my name's Laura Brethauer. Um, I moved in here only about six months ago, but I have a concern with the survey and the fact that 
as far as I know, no surveys have gone out in the past, and why is this issue going on a survey, and are major issues going forward going to be sent to the community as a survey? And the other issue is, like we just was just said, we're all here at the meeting because this is important to us. Where is everybody else? I've been at every meeting for these discussions, and I've listened to the proposals, and I've paid attention, and you're going to send a survey out to people that the majority of the community that has not been to one meeting. And is, is your survey going to reflect all of the information that was in those proposals to the rest of the community on a piece of paper in a survey? And my other question is, is there talk, there's also talk about increasing the fees. Now, as far as I understand, that has nothing to do with security. Is that also going to be made very clear in the survey that the security has nothing to do with the increase in the fees. It's got to do with all the other things going on in the community. And that's my Thank you. Yes, thank you. Next up, Mark Bennett. Hi there, my name's Mark Bennett. I've lived here about 15 years. I uh, live on uh, Nature View. Uh, my concern is uh, the Brazilian peppers. I have the, uh, Ed knows about this. I've talked to him in the past. Uh, I live with the Nature Trail. It kind of cuts out around through our, you know, it's behind us. And the Brazilian peppers, they've gotten out of control in the past. I've been to the meeting. I don't know, maybe five years ago, and it was addressed. They've been back. Uh, I spoke to Ed. I was on the list like last September, August, something like that. And uh, we have a problem with the peppers. And basically what they do is they come in onto my property, and it gets, it's out, they're out of control. There's nothing we can do about it. And uh, that's when I came the last time. and. I just wanted to know if you guys, if, we, if there was a plan in place, there, previously there was a plan in place to, you know, eradicate this stuff because it's beyond what a homeowner can do and it's also, it's on our property, it's not on my property. So that's my concern and there you go. Thank you. Next is Jack Rinaldi. Evening. Good to see you back, Jeff. Yeah. Um, not going to ask or talk about security. Not, not going to talk about Brazilian peppers. I'm going to talk about what I've talked about for two and a half, going on almost three years, and that's the midge infestation. Um, so far, we've had Pond 10 has had a lot of the airlines installed for the aeration that's going on, waiting for them to get it into Pond 7. I believe they're having some problems getting across, so. Hope we hear an update on that. Update is Tuesday they will have all the lines in. Super. And the only other thing they're waiting for is the, perm the electrical permit to be for okay. FPL. And that's it. And everything else is ready to go in. As soon as they get the electrical permit, they will put the cabinet in with the pumps and turn them on. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Good. And, and we Good. We approved at the last meeting some additional funding to put some more uh, treatment right. in both those ponds. That was going to be my next question. Hopefully, they're going to get that done here pretty quick. So, because because unfortunately, the infestation next, next week they're going to treat week? both ponds. Perfect. Because unfortunately, with the warmer weather, infestation's back again. So, so that's what I wanted. So far, guys, thanks for the progress. Let's hope the aeration and the treatment makes a difference, and we'll all be pretty satisfied with that. So, thanks again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next up, Bob Bianchi. I was at the CDD meeting last week and had some thoughts that I shared with uh, Chairman Hengel, and um, he responded to my comments the very same day, and I thank you very much for doing that. It's a breath of fresh air. Uh, I've lived here for over 10 years, and the same two issues come up time and time again. You know what they are security and landscaping. I have some thoughts that I'd like to share with you and the other residents to see if maybe we can stimulate some creative thinking and solve these issues once and for all. Um, we had uh, some introduction to 
some security proposals, uh, and I'm taking some information from what I learned uh, during our meeting. But I think we should have a combination of uh, virtual or monitored uh, surveillance as well as manned posts. I don't think we should have one at the exclusion of the other. Um, I think we should have a guard at the main gate that's properly attired, asks for identification, uh, records the time, the destination, and the tag number. Now, we know they're not required to do that, but I know that most people will do it just because they're being asked to do it by somebody in uniform. So I would also remove the posted entry code from all the gates and direct all the visitors to the front gate. Uh, consider a proposal for RFID readers for the residence vehicles. Eliminate the guards at the pool. Now, I, I have time and time again witnessed the guards in action, and they perform zero function as I see it. I don't know what the post orders are, but a very clear example occurred this week. On Tuesday, it was at the, the rec center. There was a youngster no more than four years old in the weight room. A disaster waiting to happen. And the guard was sitting right there. The guard was inside. Later on the same day, uh, there were three uh, youngsters about 10 years old in the uh, uh, hot tub, and that should not be allowed. I think we should have cameras at strategic locations at the pools, the back gates, tennis and basketball courts, and monitored by Uh, I would also suggest you consider a uh, uh, solar speed detector, a sign that would post the sign of, uh, would post the speed of vehicles passing. I think most people will comply if they're reminded. I know I do that sometimes. I'll exceed the speed limit in other communities that have them. And I see the reminder and I slow down. Uh, I think we should continue with the roving guard. I think that's a deterrent just like any other law enforcement presence. Um, I think the guard should have post orders, and we should know what they are. Because I don't know what the guards are supposed to do. Are they supposed to be inside, outside? Are they challenging people that are in the pool area? And why are they doing that? We have a card reader system that was supposed to uh, control access, but now we, it's, we have re redundant. And my last item on security <clears throat> is somebody needs to monitor the guard's performance to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, and I've heard many, many stories, lots of posts on uh, Facebook, and it appears like they're not doing what they're supposed to do. But we don't know what they're supposed to do. But we know there are certain things they should be doing that they're not doing. So I think that needs to be done. So I will um, stop at this point because I had a, a list of items relative to landscaping. But let's uh, deal with these two items to the satisfaction of the board and the community. Thank you. Next up, Sylvia Stasiowski. Hi, I see um, that there's something about holiday decorations on the, on the agenda. I'm concerned about the back gate. Uh, let me say, wait a minute, I was told, the north gate, the end, at the north end of the boulevard. Uh, the, the decorations that you have along the boulevard are beautiful. I love the swags on all the, all the signage. However, the back, the, the north entrance to the development um, is lacking. It, you, at, ni at the nighttime, you can't even see that there are any kind of Christmas decorations on the medallions. So if they, I, maybe that'll be corrected when you have your proposal that they make the lighting so it shines on the medallions. We'll discuss that later in the agenda. It's a yes. topic for discussion. Yes, Thank you. Next up, Walter Wolchak. Hi, my name is Walter Wolchak. And uh, to address a couple of things right off the bat, I have actual photographs of guards, uh, for instance, on September 14th at 11.45 p.m., stopping or chasing out teenagers from the, lock, from the locked rec center pool area. I have photographs of this guard that's over right out here uh, stopping roughhousing in the pool. I actually have photos of it, and other people were, were uh, 
seeing it because it was happen happening during happy hour. I, I have dozens of examples that I can provide of individuals. I've spent hundreds of hours with the security guards, and I, I, I can give examples of everything you can imagine. It's just not being posted on Facebook. Um, with, I've spoken with, with regards to the security survey, I've spoken with somewhere between 50 and 100 people, and the general feeling is a hybrid system seems to be a desired direction, but the problem is the cost is higher for a hybrid system than our existing cost. Um, with regards to sending out a proper survey, we, we should not just list the various options for, for the reasons that people said. Uh, we should include details on the current services, cost of the various options, and some background information about, on the pros and cons. Uh, allied security guards at the gates might be considered separately from guards at the amenity centers and roaming neighborhood security guards. That could be a, those could be separate options. Um, should we replace gate entry clickers with RFID tags mounted on rear view mirrors? The RFID tags cost $12 each per vehicle, motorcycle, new car, etc. That's going to be a big cost for people. Uh, video camera monitoring remotely versus on site. Currently, our guards watch over 20 live video cameras from the gatehouse, 24-7. I can show you examples. Every time I go there, they've got key cameras and most of the cameras in view. They're watching where the teenagers hang out. Um, automatic license plate recognition. Do we want that just for visitor gates or for all gates? And what about the cost differences and the monthly maintenance? Um, there's an idea to prevent exit from resident gates, forcing all visitors only to be able to exit through the main gate or the upper manatee gate. This can be done with RFID tagging, but do we want this? It means your pizza guy is not going to be able to get out easily. Um, with regards to one recommendation that was brought forward by various people was switch to um, manned gates from only 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, excuse me, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Go, go virtual and Vera or some solution for, for the evening hours. Uh, there's a few issues with that. Um, right now, those guards that are monitoring, from, that are sitting at the gatehouse from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. are actively monitoring cameras. If you shut that functionality down, you've got to replace it with something else. If we shut it down, we save $53,000 but if we replace it with, with Invera's solution, which is quoted in their books, that comes out to $50,000 plus $8,900 per year for the rear gate for a total of $59,000. That's $6,500 more than our existing setup. So that, that's not so great. Anyway, I've sent the full details to, this, to the CDG members. Thank you. Thank you. Last card I receive is Russ Ferentz. I know there's a lot of debate about whether we have guards at the front gate or not, so I would just like to pass on my experience in this past week. I have company that was here, my sister came through, could not remember my street, so she said, I'd like to go to Honeysuckle. I don't think we have a Honeysuckle, we have a honey flower, but the guard opened the gate. The next day I was driving her car, and of course I couldn't go through the, I had to go through the visitor. So I walked in, or I mean drove up, and I said, I'm a resident. He opened the gate, didn't question me or anything. The next day I came through, I did use the code, and I looked in the guardhouse, and the guard had his feet up, almost looked like he was sleeping or watching television. Seems like we're paying an awful lot of money for that kind of service. Thank you. That concludes the audience comment portion of the agenda. We'll move into staff reports and updates, first being the aquatics update. I know that, Jim, we outlined some most of the midge fly treatments that's going to be going on next week, as well as the aeration update as well. Was there anything else that we wanted to, and the fish docking as well, Ed, that yeah. you said was yeah. next week? Two weeks, Two weeks for that Two as weeks, well. Two uh, weeks, yeah. Ed, Ed did some really good research and found a uh, much less expensive vendor for the fish, so... Anything for the aquatics update? Anything, any problem areas, board members at this time? Move forward then to the landscape and irrigation update. You do have Richard Wilbert here 
Uh, the proposals are on your list. There's only five of them that are still left to be proposed and I'll give, are still left outstanding on there and I'll go over them with you once we let Richard speak to these as well. Good evening. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, meet with you again. Uh, briefly, I just want to go over a couple of things that uh, have been happening that I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, number one, I've been approached by a number of residents uh, regarding the ant issue. So we have decided uh, at LMP tomorrow we'll uh, be retreating all of the walkways and the nature trails to see if we can't get some of those areas under control. It appears as though they've uh, started to flourish, so uh, I think it would be best we attempt to try and get rid of them at this point. Secondly, um, I've had a, a little bit of uh, difficulty with some uh, uh, characters. Uh, I assume they're either rabbits or uh, the uh, cranes, but they're pulling out my flowers. And uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what we can do about it, but it certainly is annoying. Um, deer will do it, yes, but the others will as well. And the way they're being done, it almost would think uh, it was uh, a crane because they're just popped out and just flopped over. They're not even trying to eat them. Rabbits will eat them. So, uh, but I, I've brought this to Ed's attention. He and I have talked a little bit about some things we can do, but I'm certainly open to uh, the discussion at some point as to how we might want to address that because I don't see it going away. It happened previously. They're not no, eating no. the plants. Oh, they're just plucking they're them just, out? Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 pro they're probably eating something underneath the plants. Okay. But yellow plants are not as Tasty. edible <laughs> as other colors. Yeah. Not that that's a good example. <laughs> well, I also think it may be to the fact that uh, these are all, beds are all treated, and in this case they're all treated with manure, which may also right. add to the issue. So it may be a matter of looking at some different... Uh, items that we can put in. Yeah. The hot. Okay. Have, have they been treated with any type of insecticide for grubs or anything like that to eliminate any food source that the birds might be looking for? I'm not sure uh, about that. I haven't found anything that's indicated that anyone really has a handle on what's causing or what, what could be used to prevent them from doing it. Um, you know, again, I think. Uh, uh, you know, the old-fashioned things that I've heard of that I've tried myself, some work, some don't, things like human hair, uh, things like mothballs, things like the hot sauce have in some cases work. I know there's a commercial product called the uh, deer scram that I've seen work in occasions. I put Irish Spring soap in my hibiscus bed. <laughs> I put Irish Spring soap yeah. in my plant beds and they stopped. Yeah, some, something like that may do it. it. It would be an experiment to see what would work. So, um, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. We'll see what we can come up with, and uh, I'll continue to communicate with Ed and see if we can find a way to prevent this from occurring. Um, some of the things that we've started, uh, we've done some work on a couple of the pocket parks. Uh, we did a planting today of, uh, at the Rosemary uh, Pocket Park of uh, some... Uh, Fox lilies that uh, will be planted there add a little bit of different color to the uh, already green areas. Uh, so we've done that. We did some cutbacks on the uh, um, Honey Loop uh, uh, Pocket Park. We have a few things to complete there, but uh, we have started to do some uh, heavy cutbacks on some of the plant material to get it uh, to grow a little more vigorously. Um, Ed and I are planning a tour on Monday to kind of look at where we're at. I think we've uh, admittedly had a few faux pas in the uh, last couple of weeks, and we've tried to correct those. I've been working with my crews daily out here to try and get those things corrected. So I'm hoping with uh, his assistance we can take a look at where we're at and what we're doing and how we might uh, change some of that. We finished all the fertilizer and ornamentals. Uh, palms are all completed at this point, so those uh, rounds have been, been done. Any questions that anyone would have of, of that? Well, I know I, I wrote you a, a, a fairly detailed email over the weekend. Yes. And have those issues been addressed? The yes. leaf debris and uh, oak, oak debris along the curb spaces? The, um, for the most part, they have been addressed. Uh, there are some issues that I'm still trying to determine what the best method to deal with uh, uh, the leaf debris on the turf areas. I'm uh, concerned about where we're blowing it to and how we're blowing it at that point uh, in perhaps areas that we don't want it. So I'm looking at ways that we can perhaps change that. We've addressed the curb lines. 
throughout the property, and I think we've got that pretty much under control. We've also addressed the uh, nature trails so that they're clean at this point. My plan at this point is to try and uh, blow those areas, especially at these times of the year, two or three times during the week and see if we can't get it under control that way. I have to admit it kind of caught me off guard, so that's basically m my responsibility, and I just didn't think about it being that big of an issue. So at this point, we're trying to figure out a way to address it. Okay. So board members, you had on here on the agenda, if you click on tab number 1C, that very first page, page 12, the controller replacements. You've got three controller replacements. Um, the first begins on page 30 for the park at Rose, Rosemary. That one comes in the amount of Those are the two option proposals. It starts on page 30 and then ends on page number 33, and the total was 18575 Those are still operating right now, right? They are, yeah. Uh, okay, let's, uh, I would say that this would be something that we put into a, our uh, master plan as it goes forward, so we can prioritize some of these things once we develop that. Understood. The 51733 is the next one on there as well, and 51732. You haven't taken any action on any of these controller replacements. We are waiting on the, the development order research as well. I know for some of these as well, for the $57,000 one for 571, or excuse me, 51733, that's $57,000. And that was one we waited on for the development order. And 51732 is $19,367.61. That's page 30 through 38 of your agenda are the controller replacements. Again, I think this is something we have to wait until we do uh, uh, investigate the development order requirements at that point. And if, if that isn't satisfied that way, that then we do put this again into uh, the master plan list to, uh, you know, get this stuff up to uh, code. And, and I, I will speak to an update on that during my attorney comments. The other ones that were outstanding board members, um, page 41 and page 44. The other ones were the, tr the last one was tree rings on Honeyflower Loop. That has not been done, correct? That is correct. Is there a reason? That's $2,025 for that. It look, create tree rings around 55 trees, board members, between 50, 551 to 641 Honeyflower Loop in the back common area. Um, I, I, I think that was all uh, based upon if we were going to remove those trees that were damaged, and which, Rick's would, which would reduce that number dramatically. And Rick's going to speak to that under his report. Yeah. So the only other ones in board members, page 41, is the remove and the replace sod. It's estimate number 58199 on page 41. Again, I think this should wait until we uh, develop the master plan. And I think we can start addressing that stuff and hopefully at the April meeting. I'll place just, and then the last one is 44 for the brush cleanup at pump three on page 44 was the only other one that is outstanding at this time from LMP. And that's 2,241 25. Ed, have you had a chance to talk to those residents or anybody? Yeah, you, Denny, you were going to take a look at that down there through that trail. You wanted to look at that area? Okay. Okay. I had a chance to get out. I've had a company here all week. And okay. So I'll place those five proposals on the next agenda, then board members. Uh, Richard, did you want to indicate anything in regards to the mulch? Yeah, I did. I noticed that there was a uh, proposal that was provided to you uh, by uh, Big Earth, and I wanted to make sure that uh, we were given the opportunity to uh, uh, bid on this as well. As you may know as well, we also have a bid for a different type of mulch that was required in the original proposal. Um, the original uh, proposal that we made the specifications, I believe, called for a mini nugget type of mulch, and that's what we were required to uh, uh, provide you an estimate at that time, which is much different than the cocoa brown 
that we're looking for. So I was uh, hoping that we would get the opportunity uh, to provide you a quote for the mulch as well. I don't, I don't have a problem with the, you providing a, qu a quote. No, we can do that, and you can have that for our April meeting then if you could, and then the do board. Do you have the uh, volume requirements? Yeah, I do. The only thing I think that would be different would be the fact that there was some playground mulch that was being put down by Big Earth. Yes, put that down. Yeah, That's a safety factor. Anything else then, board members, for LMP, or do you have anything else for the board then, yeah, Richard? I think we're... Thank you, sir, Good. for attending this evening. All right, thank you. Richard. Next up, board members, uh, district engineer, Rick Schopperker. Well, first off, I want to thank, thank everyone for the, per for the prayers. They were greatly appreciated. Um, all the, uh, from the, the open heart, everything's going great. I still have some bed sores I got in Mexico that are pretty painful, but, uh, but two things. Don't have open heart surgery in Mexico, and if you take the cruise, buy the insurance. Uh, first off, the State Road 64 update. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but Manatee County is going to forward the funds. FDOT is going to pay them back, but they're going to forward the funds for the roundabout here at, at Greyhawk Boulevard, Pope, Pope Road. And, and speaking to FDOT, that construction is planned to start next summer. Uh, down, down on 117th, that developer has completed the work. Uh, FDOT has signed off on, on the work. That developer has elected to keep the barrels in place. For how long, I don't know because what we had out here, if they open up the barrels down there, I'm afraid they'll just be, be pushed down there. I'd like to, I went to the uh, meeting on Tuesday for uh, FDOT and you know, talked to quite a few of the FDOT people and a couple of our county commissioners. I would suggest everybody writing our county commissioners an email, just expressing their concern about 117 and having something done before there's an accident that's you know probably going to be a fatality there because it's by far the most dangerous intersection done oh no it will do some good if we if we bombard them with emails is there is there any opportunity for them to do the same thing there that they did over here outside of Greyhawk here well, which is no left turn yeah, and, and they can't turn left coming from the other side I I presented that to them, and the you know, people from FDOT kind of said, well, we didn't know there was a problem there. So, and it would, so uh, today, they, today most, uh, most uh, I will, a and lot that, of the people. That's untrue, Jim, uh, because we had had numerous meetings with FDOT where well, these were more the, the process of moving these the were, issue. These were the engineers, not the. Yeah, well, not, the, yeah. well we've, so, we met with the managers, right? and explain to them that our concerns were what is happening at, um, at, at the Boulevard uh, and Pope Road will just move to 107th Street. And, and it's, so it's not like so, that is not in their knowledge base uh, as I've, a problem. In talking to the county commissioners, uh, they said that they would make sure that any concerns we had that they received in an email would be forwarded to FDOT and they have the same concerns we do because they actually live in this area. You know, Vanessa yeah. Ball lives in Lakewood Ranch. She knows the problem. And uh, I, yeah, I spoke with both of them. Betsy Bannock. Uh, about she, six months ago, yeah. when we, when last time we met with the F, FDOT, uh, expressing, you know, I was the chairman then, so I expressed the community's concern and reference that and they both were very supportive then yeah. 
and it would seem that they have had some influence uh, with respect to well, they, they had a great our intersection three months, I mean three, three years, years. Yeah. ahead of where. So they were. that that's why I do encourage people to write them emails, yeah, just so they don't hear it from me as a board member or Jeff as a board member. You know, they have to hear it from a multitude of people to really make it a hotbed issue for them to really do some things. And I suggested uh, eliminating left-hand turns from uh, 64 traveling east onto 117. And that, that, that's for a couple other reasons, too, that I'll go into in a while. And, and, and I had a real good discussion with Walter Bregeman. Was he at that meeting? They're, they're all from, from Bartow. But I was explaining to him exactly that, that you know, the, the, the issues that we had at Greyhawk and the reason they did what they did was, you know, explain that people left turn, U turn, and all that. And he didn't seem like he was aware of that, but he definitely told me, he says, well, that makes perfectly good sense. He's going to talk, talk to staff. And Walter is one of, one of, the senior your people over there. So, you know, yes, if, if there's an issue, and hopefully it wouldn't take a fatality, but, but that road belongs to FDOT. They could do whatever, the, whatever they want to to make it safe. The, the two key people of FDOT that involved in our situation are Richard Lilliquist and Keith Slater. And those are the people. Keith isn't there. Oh, he's not there. Well, whoever replaces him is, is, is district traffic operations engineer. So those, the director of transportation operations, is Lilliquist, and Slater was the district traffic operations. So whoever fills those roles, that's the people that you know, we need to speak to. That we need to have all of you speak to. Uh, the next thing, uh, phase. 5 the B um, I traded some emails with Dean he's uh, he is good for Monday afternoon he said the later the better I still have not not heard from Richard so Ed I don't know if you're available Monday late afternoon yes He has, a meeting, he has a meeting with LMP. Is that in the afternoon? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, in uh, the conservation area, the signs, that little sign that's, that's on, the, the, on the posts, it's, it references these wetlands are dedicated to the, the, the Manatee County. They're not, so those little verbiage is not, not accurate. None of the wetlands have been dedicated to the county. They belong to either the CDDs or I don't believe any belong to the HOAs. So. No, it's all CDD, and I had uh, extensive correspondence with uh, Swift Mud about it, and uh, the only, th only areas that they're concerned are the two designated wetlands or the several designated wetlands in the community. And they said, you know, you might want to have to uh, contact the county about invasives in there, other, other places, but they said that, that they have nothing to do with it, so. Theoretically, then the signs can come off of those posts. Theoretically, yes. You could peel them off, but still most of the words are, they're good you know don't go past past this environmentally sensitive so i think we just blacken out right the, take the, out the, the, the county part. provision which is what i thought we talked about previous a previous meeting yeah okay and the last thing i had was uh the perimeter trees 
uh, according to the uh, original development uh, order, a canopy tree was re required every 30, 50, th every 30 linear, f l linear feet. So if we take some out, will we have to replace them? Not necessarily right in the same spot, but, but the total number was a requirement. So if we took some out, will we just need to replace them? And that's all I had. And the you perimeter something. you're talking about is the perimeter surrounding? Um, I was looking at or the is it in original. Common, just common areas in general? No, it was the outer perimeter of the development. The drawings that I had for the original Greyhawk was for 30 foot. I think for Greyhawk West, they that 50 feet. The question was, there was Kara Kara Loop was the issue that we had was and Kara Kara Loop and Honey Flower was if we remove vegetation in between those two, what would we have to place if we were to replace anything? That was a question basically from the board was what type of plant material if they were to remove it, would they have to replace it with the same thing? It's not a perimeter, so. Well, it was it was when it, it was originally uh, done, so we don't have to replace it in the same spot. But the total number of tr of the trees were part of the and development. Who who is order. the enforcement? Manatee County. Manatee County, and they would. We're concerned that they would look between. Two of our interior streets. I could almost trees. guarantee you they will not come out right. and count they trees. Don't, don't worry. Don't ask me the question, though. <laughs> Board members, did you have any other questions or comments for Rick? Thank you, Rick. Can yes, sir. I ask, um, um, had a question about landscape before we move on to the topic. I saw a number of emails to you and from you regarding issues um, about LMP. Um, how are we feeling in, in the first few months of their tenure in our community uh, with their performance? It's been a little rocky, but I lit them up over the weekend Okay, pretty good. So, so we're, uh, we're Satisfied enough to give them some more yeah. time. Yeah, they're they're kind of on an informal notice right now. Okay. Just trying to catch up. And just to let you guys know, on, on that irrigation, all those proposals, I never had any issues with Brightview with all the irrigations. We, right now, we have a lot of plants and beds that are dying, and they never were dying when Brightview had all this. Um, 117th Street is pretty much dead all along the boulevard, the plants they just put in there, there's a lot of them on the islands that are dead. I, I'd never had this kind of issue with the irrigation with Brightview. So just to let you guys know. And then the landscaping, the grass cutting, also I've never had issues with Brightview with the not skip there. I mean, they, right now they're skip, they're making one pass around a pond and then leaving it for the following week. Um, I don't know how many uh, residents already addressed that and witnessed that. There's areas where they're just, the they're not, they're not cutting it. They're not, in, in a matter of three days, Brightview had it, this whole, whole grounds done in three days. They, it it's taken them over a week, week and a half to get to the three days where Brightview was at. I don't think they have enough manpower to cover it. Next up then, board members, nothing further for landscaping irrigation, it'd be district council. Um, Really no update on the small cell technology as I've reported before. Um, Lakewood Ranch has given them a second extension. So we're sort of in a hold mode until the end of May, which is their timing for delivering um, to uh, providers that would make it worthwhile for them to proceed with their system. Um, the other item I just wanted to touch upon, which we mentioned earlier, was the DO and um, our office. Regina Kardash, an attorney in my office, is doing some research on that matter. Um, we're going to be requesting a number of documents from Manatee County. The uh, species management plan, the wetland buffer enhancement plan, 
the exotic plant species management plan, and um, any conservation easements. So with those documents in hand, she feels that she can provide an, uh, a, a more reasoned um, response to the, some of the questions that we're having. So that, that's what we're working on at the moment. Um, those are the only items I had right now, but I'm glad to answer any questions. No questions for Andy at this time, board members? Thank you. Next up will be Ed's report is under tab number two, board members, and we've got a couple of proposals under there to address as well. The first is his report on page 51, and then we've got a couple of proposals, tab 3A, page 54, and then 3B, page 59, are the two, are the play and spray. And I'll turn it over to Ed. And if you have any questions on the field manager report. Uh, I've got one question. Who applied the CHOP choice? Oh, that was LMP. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that, that it wasn't an in-house no. thing. No. Okay. No, that's a, they have to have a license to, in yeah. order to do that. Yeah, it's in a contract anyway to do that. Right. And I, uh, the uh, lights at the basketball court, that has been addressed. Uh, there was this vandalism issue. They got mad and they kicked in that panel. So that's why the lights were not operable. The timer was jammed in between the plate. So, um, that and then also the water fountain in the back uh, by the tennis courts. I'm having that replaced. Uh, it's $1,500. It will have a new two tier, but it's also gonna have a bottle fill on there with a filter. So nobody has to drink out of that when they urinate in the fountain back there. You can just put your bottle up and pour it right out so people could actually use that fountain back there. And that's all on that report. So then board members, if there's no questions on Ed's report, tab 3A is a play and spray. Um, we will take a look at this. Uh, that one, the one company right now, uh, is breaks on that playground, play equipment, we cannot replace any of that equipment. They will not sell you guys any components, any department place. Uh, they directly, that's why it was taking so long for the company to get back with me. They are, aware, they are aware that we need to have parts for that and they're refusing to sell any vendor the parts for our Greyhawk landing. Board members, board members, I don't know how much you know about the history with Compaq, but we had um, a dispute with them in that um, we had Way back in 2014, they had charged us um, $24,000 to do some renovations. We were not happy. We had paid them 50%, and we were not happy with the renovations. They were never able to get it to the condition that we felt they, we had contracted for. Um, there was an exchange of letters between them in December of 2014, and then my letter back to them in January of 2015. And um, we never did pay them the additional $12,000. We held that money. Um, they threatened to come after us for it. We basically told them, you know, give it a shot that you haven't performed pursuant to the contract. And obviously they, they dropped that and didn't do anything further. So we have sort of a bumpy relationship with Compaq, to say the least. Now, uh, when they, we have I've been here uh, two times. We had to replace the pump for that plant spray. I've been working with the vendor. They're lying and saying they're buying the, the pump from another facility, which is the same pump, and that's the only reason why we're, we're getting the pumps replaced for that. Uh, the overall state of the current splash and play, you know, I, I don't know if anybody else on the board went and looked at it when the, when the water was off uh, about the, the rust the sharp edges, the 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 slide being split, uh, no no uh, cushion for small children coming off that slide. That's been another concern that's brought to my attention. Uh, so, you know, now you can go ahead. I don't know. If everybody else was aware of how deteriorated that that apparatus is. I, I thought I had questioned how old it is. It's 17 years old. Yes. 
I would assume then that the proposal that they have from Compact in here to dismantle it and send it in and have it refurbished doesn't mean anything because it's with Compact also. Okay, so. And that was 2013. Yeah, and it was for like $19,000 to, yeah. But that was before you had, we had any problems with them, correct? All right. Well, yes. And we contracted with them for the renovations in February 27th of 2014. When I went back and looked through our file on it. Since I've been on board, that was the issue when I stepped on. And we've just been winging it, fixing it. Uh, myself, staff, we've been going out there and just fixing whatever we can ourselves and replacing it. So there's been a lot of mold and stuff in there and black mold and things that they've, you've had to clean out. Yeah. Rot, uh, the gates rotted away rotted about three away, or four yeah. times already. We had welded up. And basically that's an integral part of the structure of the pool, correct? It's not like we can just, you know, there's been some, some people ask, why can't we just take it out? It is an integral part of the pool. The concrete's actually formed to it. Things for that are run through those pipes. It's all built up to that specific. Well, the company I've been working with, uh, the, right now the, the one that he sent over, that is a design that they're putting at another facility. But uh, Carleen brought, even brought to my attention that we can remove a lot of the products on there. They have spray guns. I don't know if you guys want the spray guns shooting water. They'd be shooting. So we can eliminate that. The, the sliding board is longer. We could go with a shorter slide. So there's a lot of stuff that you could actually eliminate on there to cut that price down. And then also I'm waiting on another uh, proposal from him that he's putting in another plan spray, another place that we could take another look at, another design. Yeah, what, what would a warranty be on a new? That would be, we would have a contract that Andy would draft, I'm assuming, for something this large, and we would place in there the warranty period. Yeah, but I, I mean, off the top of my head, I don't know what they'd be willing to offer, and I think that's your question, so I don't yeah. know. And the other thing I would just keep in mind, board members, is what time of year you want to do this. If you do decide to replace this, keep in mind the summer's coming up. Obviously, it's going to be pretty packed pool season this summer. Yeah. Well, as well. You know, that's one of the questions we'd have for them. What would be the downtime for them to mm -hmm. install if mm -hmm. it's only a matter of three days, four days? That's yeah. a different story. That's not a big thing. To 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 order it, but but not to install once it's on once it's on site. We investigated this company, make sure they're not the same wolf in the different sheep's clothing. I can investigate. Are you talking about like look? At, I can look at like their Sunbiz certificate and things like that, and make sure that they're still intact. Correct. I can do that. Thank you. This. Would this have to go for a formal RFP for the cost? No. Okay. $195,000 would be your threshold, so it's expensive, but we're under that. I mean, this proposal as it sits is for $119,300. Um, and, and again, there it doesn't say in how long it would take to dismantle the other one and put this one in. But perhaps looking into a modified plan, so some of the things that are in here, like spray guns and things of that nature, if we could, you know, you can get a, a, a quotation from them or come up with a, a, an idea of what we think makes the most sense and then get another proposal back might be a good idea. But as you said, we're coming up into the summer months very quickly, so we can't spend too much time if you want to have it up for the, you know, I understand that the one that's there now is, is it's there, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, so I, I would get a, a quote with a uh, little bit more of a stripped down model without the guns and other things like that and uh, see what we can go for there and then ask them for a, you know, you know a uh, removal and install. Would any of the board frame. members feel comfortable working with Ed on this? I mean, this is probably something oh, that, oh. Mark, you feel comfortable? So we'll have Mark and you and Ed can work together, and we'll have quotes for the April meeting then, so that way you can get the more bare-bone model. I'll research compact more. I'll make sure that everything's intact in with them. Or, excuse me? 
Aquatic Fountains. Aquatic Fountains, excuse me. Aquatic Fountains. Have, have you, um, I'm sorry, last meeting, did you discuss this at all and make a motion to move forward to do what you're doing? Has that been something the board has directed or? Well, in terms of like. So, I mean, we can go back and negotiate, but if we're not going to. Well, no, we haven't made the this board, kind of expenditure. Nothing's been point? nothing's been motioned for at this time. They have nothing. Should, that's what I'm saying. Should have something, some statement of the board's will to proceed with this in concept, uh, given that it could be a six-figure expenditure. I would make a motion that we should go ahead okay, with the investigation sure. of it. We're all on that same yes. page. Yeah, since this is yeah, we're getting to a safety f issue over there. What, what, what was the motion? It was a make sure motion to move forward with the um, reserve fund expenditure for the plane spray equipment at the rec center. That was a motion from Jim, a second from Denny. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next up, then, board members, Mark, you'll work with Ed on this, and then we'll have them for the April 25th meeting for that. Um, so the next item will be... A tab four board members, you have holiday decorating proposal. You did hear from one resident. I'm actually going to allow for GL Designs actually to answer any questions. Uh, you have Julianne's here. I know that Ed, you were able to meet with her on site as well for your holiday decorations. Reason you're seeing this so early is that sh I'm sure she can indicate as well. Most CDDs do it around this time frame to get on schedule because if you try and do it in Octo September, October, most of the time their schedules are booked for the Christmas holiday by that point. So uh, I'll turn it over to Ed, and we can let Julianne speak as well if you have any questions. That's under tab four, page 71. And it's also under set of cover as well. She provided uh, I went over with her. We went over with a lot of stuff. Uh, the residents were concerned. Uh, they would be adding lights to the palm trees in the front and the back uh, at the clubhouse as well, at the rec center. So it would be a lighted, lighted palm trees. It, it's a big difference. The bows, the decorations, it would be a big change to Greyhawk. And yeah, I would let her speak on that and let her look at the, let you guys look at the photos and everything, but I was very impressed with it. It's a world of a difference from the old decorations. Okay, this is a new vendor then? This is the vendor right here. Okay. Just let me know if you have any questions. Um, I thought it would be a little bit easier just to give you a visual today. That's why I brought you a packet. Um, so I just literally went from the front of all of the descriptions from the main entrance at 64. Um, and this is just an idea of what we're thinking for the community. Um, again, we wanted to do something that was, you know, different from what you've had in previous years. Um, so um, something that I think that would look really neat here with all of these um, large oak trees are something that we call tree trunk wrapping. Um, so on the second um, page there, you'll see some examples of what that would look like. Um, and we have proposed um, on the next page to do the tree trunk wrapping on four of the large oak trees um, by the gatehouse. We have um, included a menorah in the front um, as well. And then moving on to the clubhouse, um, pretty self-explanatory um, with the green and white palm tree lighting um, on the Sylvester palms that you have out here, as well as the roof line lighting and the garland. And then the, on the recreational facility, we do have the garland and the bows around the entrance there, as well as the very large wreath. But we've also proposed, if you'd like to add um, additional tree trunk wrapping, we do have that as an option as well, um, which Ed and I have talked about. I think it would look really nice on the three additional trees there in front. And then you'll still be well under budget. So just let me know if you have any questions. What, what, what is our current budget? 10000 and you got the same bid from your other vendor that you normally use, or that you've used last year, excuse me, a Sarasota, excuse me, Trimmers Holiday Decor, in the total $10,017. Less. Get more done for less. Insurance, correct? Sure do. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to accept 
proceed. I'd like to make a motion to proceed. That's a motion from Lynn. Yes, sir. Um, the um, monument um, decorating, would that be comparable to um, right, but that's that's not a street monument. That's a, that's a, something else. That's the end rear end. Yeah. So would it be comparable to that rear entrance um, on each of the street monuments that are double sided? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, all of the individual um, neighborhoods within Greyhawk Leaning, they, the double sided monuments will absolutely have the garland and the bows on them. Uh -huh. okay. And that's including the additional, the new, since the, all of the constructions happened, um, and there's the total count there. Okay. Uh, what's the size of the menorah? Um, it will be at least three feet tall. And that'll be outside? Mm hmm. Okay. Board members, if there's no further, you did have a motion on the table approving the holiday decorating proposal from Lindsay? I'll second it. Second from Jim. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you for attending this evening. I'll Thank send you very over much. the quote as well. And then we typically, when do we typically decorate it? Uh, that would be, they would start in November. Uh, we would have those uh, the monuments power washed for them, and the last, they, they would start decorating. It would be like the first week in November. So and then. Is it October? Are we. Okay. Are we going to add on that additional $1,200 that's in here the for the three trees over it? Because I think. My opinion is I think you should, but okay. So we're, we're it would be, and also in that motion would be a revised motion to include the 1200 for the additional lighting. Yes. I, that's a motion yes. from Jim, second from Denny. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Next item, board members. Next meeting will be April 25th, 2019 at 6 p.m. Business administration is next on the agenda. Meeting minutes from the February 28th meeting is under tab number five. Let me, have, let me know if you have any comments, questions, or concerns in regards to these as presented. I have some, since I wasn't here. Um, microphone, I'm sorry. Um, reading the minutes left me a little uninformed um, on some of the items, particularly when they didn't get to the motion stage. So particularly uh, items uh, 8 through 11, they, they kind of like ended. You know, a discussion ensued, and then they fell off the cliff. So two of them are on the agenda tonight. And so my, my request, maybe more than a question, because I'm not saying you need to change this, you know, this set of minutes, but maybe going forward, the minutes should include what was not necessarily the back and forth of the discussion, but what was the conclusion that was reached as a result of this? Whether to completely, you know, this, this subject is no longer going to be considered, this subject is going to be tabled and pursued at a future board meeting, or this issue went to motion and the motion results were whatever that was. Is that Reasonable to ask that? I can do that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments in regards to meeting minutes? If there, if there are none, we'd be seeking a motion to accept the meeting minutes from the February 28th meeting. I make the motion we motion accept from Denny. Second. Second by Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next up, tab six, board members, you have the operations and maintenance expenditures for February of 2019. These total $85,175.54. This include a lot of the stuff that uh, LMP has been doing um, in addition, because I have last the meeting, uh, the last meeting we had, there was quite a bit of work done, and then I tried that to- That you'll see in the- You'll see in the next, you'll see in the March, they haven't submitted those invoices yet. Okay. That'll make this, because these are all January invoices that you're seeing on here. You'll probably see them in the March expenditures. Okay, thank you. You've, all, you've got three irrigation repairs on page 82, so that should be the first couple of them. I anticipate you'll probably see another, I would say 10 on the next, on the next set, so at, at minimum, so. Yeah, there's quite a 
if you hear and if you look at the amount of money that was spent, that was done, it's a significant amount. I just wonder, I, I didn't believe it was in here because the price was just too low. The, no, that's this one. That, they haven't even submitted. You'll see that in the March expenditure. I anticipate that that'll be a high dollar amount that you'll see from LMP. So. All right. Thank you. Any other questions in regards to any of these invoices that have been paid, board members? Seeing none, we'd be seeking a motion to ratify the operations main expenditures for February. Motion by Lindsay. I'll second it. A second by Denny. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next up is website 88 compliance under tab 7. I'll, uh, let, I'll speak to it a little bit. This is one that's provided by your insurance provider. These are just general guidelines. Uh, for your website, just for your knowledge, we've already taken steps towards this as well. We've already got a language on the website as well that diverts people with any sort of disability to reach out to our district office, uh, and we will accommodate them accordingly. So that is already on your webpage, uh, taking steps towards that, and I'll let Andy kind of speak to what else he's seen in communities as well. Um, just that there's a couple issues. Um, there's some potential legislation that might be enacted, although I haven't seen any movement in it lately with regards to this issue, trying to protect entities from the litigation. Um, but on another front is that um, Rosetta and Company has brought forward a vendor, which I think we've talked about in the past, ADA site compliance. And I have been working with them for another district for Waterleaf, in fact. And um, just as recently as yesterday, I had a conference call with the head of their company. We're working through the terms for a master service agreement with them. So um, we're pretty close to negotiating the final terms on that. My hope would be to use that agreement for all of my districts that are interested in using that vendor. So um, hopefully we can achieve some efficiencies in that regard. And um, they offer two options, and I believe I've discussed this with the board before, but um, what they call their option one is that they, you leave your site sort of where it is, they go in and they address any issues and remediate it. Option two was to take your content and move it to their template. And initially, and that's cheaper, initially that looked like an advantageous position to adopt. But um, as we fleshed out the details more, it became apparent that if we terminate this company in the future, that they would simply hand you your content back and then you'd have to start over again. So very much leaning towards that option one. So it's sort of a evolving process that we're working on. And um, I know that also I spoke with Eric Daly from Rosetta, and they're potentially looking at some other vendors as well that they can bring forward to districts. So right now, um, we're addressing it, and we're working on it. There's not an extreme deadline, since Aegis has said they just want you to have a plan in place, not done, just a plan in place by October 1st. So we're being mindful of that as, uh, as we proceed forward, and I'll keep you posted. Glad to answer any questions anybody has. Next topic on the agenda then, board members, uh, the clubhouse sound abatement. <laughs> so what types of, this was something we've kept on the agenda, board members. Um, this was something we viewed in the past. I think the quote was $7,200, Denny and Jeff, if you recall. I believe it was $7,200 was the first one we looked at. And that was back in, I believe, January, <laughs> January of 2018. And we looked at that. So, is there any type of sound abatement that the board would like to currently see here? Any vendors that you prefer to work with? I mean, we can obviously reach out to the same vendor and get an updated price on, from it the last time as well. But anyone in the audience as well that has any knowledge in this as well? Uh, what did the uh, last plan in entail? So it had, we had panels up top and you had curtains basically like almost this entire, like it was like drapes basically all the way over all the doors and all the openings and yeah, the board didn't like that option, so. No. Yeah. Is there any, any way we can have them just quote the ceiling, start with that, 
Start with some uh, panels, on the, on, the panels, panels on, on the walls. You know, do we need panels on the walls and the ceiling? And, I would you think know, you're going to need paneling on the you walls. Yeah, we don't need drapes. That's just going to be a nightmare. Somebody ripping the, them down and the, grant. The, the team that the uh, intent was to more address the hollowness of the building sound than to enhance people's ability to hear anything. I, I have just, a like just change the tone. I have a CDD in Venice that just installed panels, and um, the company was Acousti, I believe is their name, A-C-O-U-S-T-I, and they were very happy with the job performance there. I might want to check on that. Thank you, Andy. I'll work with Ed, and we'll get proposals for the April meeting from yeah. that vendor. Part of the issue you need a motion for sound yeah. is where is the sound coming from, and where does it have to go? So here, we're looking at not a fixed location for the sound, but sound to be Absorbed. coming from different parts of the room. So putting panels up only helps to keep the, the sound from bouncing. And, but if it's coming from, from this table out to the audience only, then you can address that. But if it's coming from that corner and, and over there and over there, then it's not as simple to, um, to address I would, I would suspect that these companies have sound type engineers, people that are capable of assessing that requirement and Absolutely. the needs for that. And, uh, and in getting our quotes, we should yeah. probably be sure that that's what we're getting. I know, I know sound is challenging for anybody sitting back there right now. And, and, I, and it's worse when it's a large group of people in here having conversation. When it's a function. Yeah, it's, so anything that would stop the bouncing yeah. would help. Where's the sound coming from? From is it from this this box under the table? Maybe we can. No, I know. I mean, it's coming. It starts with me. But where's the amplification? It's the windows. So maybe we can put this out in front of the in front of the curtain. No, it's not clear. Yeah, or that's true. Test. <laughs> Can you hear better now? Yeah. All right. Let's table. Money Yeah, it's okay. Drapes. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a look. We'll experiment with this. If the sound gets better throughout the meeting, and audience members, if you have good feedback, then we can still explore the other proposal. Oh yeah, we definitely have to explore that for functions. Yeah. Understood. We'll have that for the April meeting. Next up, board members, is the discussion of the security survey letter. This is what I provided to you in front of you is a draft letter. Um, Andy's taking a look at it as well let me know obviously this can be revised obviously board members the how this works is for a mailing you pay per page so you got to figure it's at least a dollar it's about a dollar a page just about to do a mailing so you got to times that by the number of homes as well so anything longer than this would go on to the second page basically and the one thing that andy and i discussed beforehand was putting a deadline on this obviously as well and, and if we were certain that and to have it have it any validity to it, what kind of percentage of of residents are we going to have to have respond to this? Is the last it like time five percent, ten percent? We did a survey. We got about forty percent response. What was the topic, Jeff? It was on the prioritization of different um, activities, amenities, basically. Okay. Um, do you want a dog park? Uh, those types of questions. And um, basically, the response was um, unusable because it was this, you know, this our chronic problem, the silent majority. Um, so many of our residents will not respond. We will not get their input. Well, that's, and, and the other thing, since, they, since it's not like, do you want a dog park or not, because everybody knows what a dog park is, nobody knows what these security presentations were. So, uh, you know, I, I have a problem with 
that even if we got 100% participation from the residents, all but the 40 or 50 people that come to these meetings are the only ones that have ever seen a presentation on it. So what are they basing their opinions on? Yeah, I, no, probably their experience with uh, our, our, current, our current situation and their experience with other communities' virtual systems. So uh, you know, we continue to have a, a very strong need for our existing uh, vendor to perform better, to look better, to sound better, to act smarter. I think we agreed to pay them more yes. already. So that's not the issue any longer. Um, and Andy, I've got, a, I've got a question for you uh, uh, about uh, if we do go to an RFID system and can we restrict entrance and exiting to just the main gate on 64? Visitors, for visitors. Hold on. So, so for visitors. Am I too close? Well, this mic works. Let me make sure I understand your question, which was, can... Obviously, residents will have RFID or whatever the credential so, choice is, so, so they can enter. Oh. Now you did it. <laughs> so they can enter and exit at whatever entry yes. point. Um, if you want to, if the question is, can you make it so that visitors um, can only exit through the main gate and perhaps the rear gate as opposed to the side gates, the answer is yes. And so can we restrict entry to just the main gate yes. for visitors? Yes, you can. So we can restrict exiting for visitors to the main gate too, right? I'm sorry. I so guess. at the same time, we could restrict exiting to the main gate only for visitors too. Correct. correct? So we don't have to have upper manatee as a public access gate. You do not. You need to have one access point that's 24-7 for entry and exit, and if you were to restrict everything to just say, let's say the State Road 64 gate, my recommendation, as I've done in other communities, is that you place signage and such so that people ha know how to get in and out. Yes. Otherwise, um, it's never been tested, okay? Thank goodness, knock on something. So there's no case law or attorney general opinions in that regard, and believe me, it comes up all the time. Um, but there are a number of communities that function in that way. So until it's been tested, um, I'm okay with it. That Lakewood Ranch Country work. Club, for those of you that have been in there, functions that way. There are some other communities that function that way as well. That, that should work for the front and the rear gate. How do we handle 117th Street? You've got two gates there, and right now you're going to have construction going on in there for, what, another year, year and a half no. perhaps, no. two more years? I had a slight idea with that. What, what you know. Yes. Not residents. Well, visitors are construction workers too. Well, they're non residents. Yeah, the gates open during the day. Do we have to, though? Or do we have to, or, do we, or could we make either one of the. That is something that the vendors will insist on. But w can we have. Can we require. Can we. Yeah. Yeah. Can we require the, the developer and the other home builder in here to man the gates and manually operate them? for construction. No. Or we close the gates. We, we, right now, we own those gates and we operate those gates, correct? If you close them, keep in mind that they, and you force the traffic to your front gate, that you're going to have heavy trucks and dump trucks chewing up your roads. Yeah, but I don't, I, or you're going to have those but, gates flying off into the grass every yeah. day. And then they get charged for them. Yeah, right. But there's no one there. What about, what no, about we have cameras, don't we? 
what about entrance to at, at the front entrance if you start to have panel trucks uh larger trucks come through i know that they have hit the uh the club uh, the, excuse it's me the, the gatehouse and yeah, stuff go so you're going to have to direct them so. one location probably the rear gate only well right now i have signs getting made up since uh the the roof at the um, guardhouse got uh, hit already twice we don't know who did it because the cameras don't point up that way the truck hit the corner of that. Uh, Curry Roofy is coming in April to fix that. That's $1,200. I'm having, I already had the signs made up for no box trucks, no semi trucks to come because uh, if somebody's driving a box truck, they're hitting that guardhouse uh, already within probably the last three, four months. The guardhouse have already got damaged. We, every time, every other month, we're fixing the stucco for that. Um, a trailer, there, it was a lumber company trailer, just hit that last month. They paid for it. Um, but otherwise, but if you have any more semi trucks, you're just going to keep damaging that roof up there. A recommendation is if what I see other communities do, uh, Harrison Ranch up the road, just make one designated construction entrance. Tell Richard these are the only gate. Everything else is going to be redirected to State Route 64, and you say the first gate on 117th Street. That's the only one that your construction trucks can go through. Every other one, you're going to have to be rerouted either back to that or come through State Route 64. So you guys just need to let me know which gate you want to make, and I can tell well, Richard. The bulk of the construction is down at the first gate on 117 now, anyhow. So. so that would, and then that would mean that if that tr big construction truck missed that first gate, they would have to turn around at some point and come back to that gate. Mm -hmm. And that is where the bulk of the construction is, correct? I mean, uh, board members, I would we would seek a motion to actually make that and put that into effect. I would. I anticipate he probably needs at least a week or two to notify all his vendors that that's going to be the only gate that they're going to be able to get in. So that would be the first gate coming down on 17th Street? When you enter off of 64, it would be the first gate. The Golden Rod. The Golden Rod gate yep. off of 117th. That's a motion to make the 117th gate at Golden Rod the designated construction entrance for Richard Rogers and any corresponding home builders. A second by Mark. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. I, I did. I talked to uh, Richard about this about two months ago. I tried to get him to close that Rosemary. That's what I proposed to him. He was not for it. He's he's going to fight no, against it. I, I don't. I'd also so, like to make a motion while we await these surveys that we make a, a situation of. I don't know, five cycles of codes to change our front and back gate codes so that they cycle through and they're not the same. Do you hear that end? So that's five cycles, so just every month, basically, or every couple Taking of weeks, Taking we'll down the it. codes on the back gate? The, the, they're, they're, it, they're, the only they're not there anymore? They're, they're, no, there's, there, there has all, all the gate, all the codes okay. are at the front gate only. That's okay. it. There's no, there's no other, so all, the, all, the, all the signs okay. that are at every gate yeah. is telling you to, to go to State Route 64. Worn-off numbers aren't, aren't there anymore. <laughs> Have those changed and put the new codes up? Okay. Um, I would like to speak to Wally. He had actually proposed a very good idea as far as a, a cycle of changing the codes. Well, now just to give back up a step, and, and what are what codes are you changing? The gate access codes, removing the, the, the resident front code. And the back? Well, there's no codes on the back. You said there there's are no codes keypads. On the back. There's an access panel right. on the back. So I would I would propose no sign. Right. But the codes. And are I would propose changing it. And, and I can't agree with that, because I've had trouble on and off with my transponder, and I know lots of people who do but as well. We change and it, I and it's a resident. Get in the back gate. But if it's a change, pushing the keypad. Right. So we change it so that okay. it's not so one that the keep, entire county knows. That's what I'm asking. Is yes. what is your proposal? Because you, it's change, not clear. Changing the code. Keep the code change structure. The keep the change keypads, the number. But change the number yes. periodically. Yes. And would we publish that? We, of course to, not. to residents, we would have to. to. But how would we publish it? How do we, 
to the 30 percent who go on to the, the website? How do you get that data out to well, the, the residents is his yeah. question. I'll think it's about a that. Issue. I will think. Hey, about board that. members, but board members, before we hear a lot of audience comments, obviously, if you're going to send out a letter, you, one way you can do it is stick it to the back of the letter. Confidential. You can put five codes on there. This is this will be for May 2019. This will be for June yes. 2019. This will be for July. This will be and, for August. And if they don't read it, then we can't make them read it. Yes. But this has already been agreed to, so it would just be added to it. Uh, it was, this has already been, the survey's already been proposed, so it would go out with the survey that for periods of time that these are the codes. residents and guests to the main gate. Do you mind if I explain? Yes, please. Uh, it, it's not what you're thinking. Uh, I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> I know, no, but uh, the idea is not to make monthly codes. The idea is to Lindsay just said. Five, five different codes, but not rotated the way you think. The five codes would be printed on a sheet of paper on a, on a stand that they put out front at the, at the main gatehouse. That's the only place that those codes would be usable. And uh, that's different. That's that's correct. That's different than what Lindsay said. The kiosk that you're, re the, if you're if you're referring to the north kiosk, the ki kiosk functions over there and it accepts codes, but okay. it also but it also currently accept, it, it accepts codes that residents have. All the old re excuse me, not old, but right. residents that have lived here for a while have a code. They have private codes, right. so you can get yourself in. So you don't have to use the 477 code. If you have your own code that's one, two, three, five, five, that one would continue to work. If you can't, you can get that code from Carlene can set up the code and she can program the kiosks. She she has it for a whole list of people, and they're already set up. There are many residents that have been here for 10, 15 years who have been using the codes. But you have to get that code by talking to the resident. Well, okay, okay, but uh, that, there's there's a separate issue with regards to the front main gate. Well, don't stop back and forth. Stick with one. Finish your, what your proposal is, and then let us absorb uh, uh, it and, and agree to something. Uh, okay, let, and then move on to the, so the part. so the proposal is very simple. Create five rotating codes that are not used in any normal pattern per se. The guard puts out a code for Monday, or it can be arranged through Carlene. So on Monday, a certain code works. If he's not at the gate, he puts out the board that says code 7777 works today. Tuesday, he puts out a code that's 5555. And again, only to be used when the guard's not there. You can disable the code box so that it doesn't even function if the guard is at the main gate. Very simple interlock, a kid can do it. So now we don't have people just randomly going through, blowing through the gates, because right now this whole idea of taking people's names and license plates and all that is totally missed because everybody just punches in 477 or 377 and just goes in. Maybe 10% of the people actually go to the gate guard and talk to them. But, so, okay, so it, but if the guard were always at the gate and never not at the gate... Then you don't need it, you don't display the sign. You, so then you don't display the sign. But if he's going on his rounds... Because the guard's always there for business. But right now... Or what about for residents? The, residents? the residents have clickers. No, they don't necessarily. They use their own codes, too. Their own codes? Yeah. You, can, you can see Carlene. Yes. But why don't they have clickers? Because they have three cars. And they can buy another one. No, you can... $10. That's not our fault. You can program the clicker... Ma'am... Anyway, there's only, one, there's only one catch to this plan right at the current moment. Carlene's having some kind of problem with communicating to the kiosks. So until that gets fixed, we have a slight delay. I'm sorry. The reason, the reason I'm belaboring this is for years we have debated the security protocols. And I'd like to get it done once and for all. Okay? And that's why I'm... I want to understand what it is that's being proposed 
so that at least we can agree my, on what it is that we're approving. My proposal is to have a roaming changing of the code. Okay. But that's, that's like a paragraph 37 of a 20-page document. It's a temporary. So what are the, what are the post orders for the guards? But if the, if the resident or a guest enters through the, the resident gate and punches in a code, why there is no. Why are they what, the time? Because they also, they have to eat. They have to pee. Well, <laughs> that's an ally problem. Well, well uh, I, in, our, in our rules that you enacted back in September, you have instructions for them at 5 p.m., 5 or 6 p.m., I was just reading it, um, Grant, you just sent it to me, at 5 p.m., they're supposed to go and do their rounds to inspect the buildings and I uh, forget what else they have to do. So, so then they're gone. So then they're, but, but I mean, that's your, that's your current rules. Okay. And changing the post orders at this point just isn't going to be effective, is my opinion. But having the code change on a random basis and not be publicized at the gates, I feel, would be so more So why don't you find out, Jen, what the code is when you're entering the back gate? We can set as a, a schedule. Resident. As, as a resident, if your clicker is not working and you're going through the back gate, you could ask Carlene to give you your personal code so that you don't have to deal with these five random codes. So that a code that never changes. There will be there will be a code, code for you change. until until but, we find out you've given it out to people. Then but we you've have to still got it. you've got to get that data out to the community. How do you get that out to the community when the code changes? We, I'm at the back gate. My clicker doesn't work. How do I get to Carlene if I can't get in and I don't know the code? No, this this is this would be either you do it you do it before. <laughs> Or you drive around. We, we can set a schedule, a six-month schedule that doesn't change. Maybe it changes. It, it, the codes change quarterly. The first day of every fiscal quarter, the code changes to this. It goes out with the mailing. If they I, don't get it, it's not our fault. I, they need see, to check their mail. The other thing, board members, is let's not forget what Ed indicated previously, is that right now to do these gate code changes, this kiosk we're having issues with. So that's going to need to be addressed prior to any of these changes being done. So keep that in mind as well. This isn't going to be decided. To, this isn't going to be decided on tonight. This is, this is something you need to fix the kiosk first and foremost. Once that's fixed, then you can discuss methods for that. So it has to come out here and change those codes. That, this is something that Carlene just can't do. This is this is CI access has to come out and rewire or redo all those kiosks just to let you know. I don't I don't care. C CIA access. This is okay. this is this is not this has nothing to do with the security company. Okay. This is the gate company. CIA access. Right, and that's what I'm saying. They're out here fixing something. It seems Mike, please. Mike, they're out here fixing something. It seems at least three times a month that it can be a scheduled visit. Oh yeah, that that's, that, that's yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just letting you know that that's there, just something they would it, have to do. Yeah. So you'll let us know when that's completed. Thank you. There, there's no way either you or Carlene couldn't be trained to do that. No. The only reason for this situation is because what was the Mike, Mike. 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 The, the only reason that we're in the pickle that we're in right now is because what we gave out was the master code. 4777 is the master code. If we had given out any other code, we wouldn't be in this pickle. So once we changed the master code, which Carlene thought was a 15-minute process, from that point on, we would never give out the master code. We would just give out these, these dummy codes or we put, put them on the board at the gatehouse on certain days. Put a dummy code out there. It, it, you, you, would have to get, have the key, you would have to keep a number like 4777, but don't give it out to somebody. But you know, right, so that would be part of the, the, the quarterly change, where it would stay on that schedule. It would change the first day of the quarter. It would be a set code for first, second, I, third, fourth. And then see what she's saying is CIA. It would CIA. be just like a resident, see, or like a resident. I, I would suggest because I'm not I, I have, I'm not familiar with none of this. I would I would suggest we have a representative some CIA access come out and address this to you guys. And what I'll talk to CIA because I use them in other communities. There's definitely software out there that I think we can put on our computers that should be able to do it. If I need to do it from. Brandon, I can do it from Brandon. Any other Still on the sur security survey letter topic, board members, this is going to be probably the main topic we've got for the rest of the agenda. So, 
And this is the other time to talk about survey. The, survey. the use of the survey was was approved last month. We, you yes. board directed staff to draft something. It has oh, not been motioned to be mailed. The only thing I so I drafted this for you today to look at. This is what it, something I just you have used in other communities. You've used this exact Not one? this exact one, obviously, Four. but like this type of method where you put a deadline on the end, then they get submitted back to my office. Your last survey, you surveyed 669 residents. You only got 34% response. My comment with your grant was that it should have a deadline on it, which you just referenced. There's a couple typos that I can show them as well. But. When is the mailing due for our budget? So your budget meeting is the fourth Thursday in May. They need to be approved. Any increases by June 15th of this year is the date that it's due to the county that we submit your tax roll to the county. So it would be your May meeting. Unless you did a special meeting between your May meeting and June and your June 15th deadline, but most of the time you'll motion at that May meeting for any sort of increase at that time. Yeah, that's, that's the key point to it is if we are requesting or you know, submitting a need for an increase in the fees, we need to know by that. But not what our expenditures are necessarily. No, just that there's just a fee increase. Just if we're going increase. to have the county collect more money for us, okay. we have to tell them. You just need to set a high dollar amount. So you can put, you can say you're going to increase five million if you want, but you only have to, that's just a high watermark. You could only increase a hundred thousand, but you just have to set that high watermark at May meeting. As Grant said, at that May meeting, you have to do it by June 15th. Based on our meeting schedule, it would be our May meeting. We would need to adopt a not to exceed budget. You can always, um, when you get to your public hearing, whether it's in August or July, you can always move money around between categories and you can always lower it, but you would not be able to go higher because the county's gonna put out a trim notice with a high water mark on it. So what would a reasonable deadline be to get this out and returned in time for that? So that would be, we would send that out in June, which would mean we'd probably make that sometime in July would be the She's deadline. She's talking about the survey. So we it has we, to go out. And what kind no. of increase in expense are we can, thinking might be the consequence of the various survey alternatives? Uh, actually, the fee increase has nothing to do with Well, it has security. definitely something to do with it. Because the uh, survey is only about security. Yes. If we're thinking about, someone mentioned this earlier, if we're thinking about raising the fees to the residents, regardless of what it's for, that's what this deadline is about. It has nothing yes. to do with security. But it's the budget, that's when the deadline is. But, but we're, we're saying we can divert money from landscaping to security within the budget. But if we're going to yeah, cause there, there, the there's budget no to line be, item deadline for us yeah. based on security. No, I'm, exactly. I'm, okay. What I'm saying is you don't need to know what you're going to do with security if security's cost. The, we're not going to drive a price the increase. The goal was to send this out with that survey to save money. So that what? it wasn't two separate. Send what out? The, the survey, uh, the, the budgetary information as well as this survey. You were, at this Jeff, time. Jeff, you're required by statute to send out a memo that says you are about to see an assessment increase on your upcoming tax bill. Why are we going to say that? You what, have to. What is it that we're going to spend the money on? Well, if we want to fund, we, if we want to fund the to reserves, the prices. If we want to fund the reserves. We're going to have to no, raise the No, we are fees. we are funding the reserves no, we're not. every year now. This year we're a hundred thousand dollars in the hole. Yeah, because of of the way we are, have made decisions on expenditures. So if we're gonna hold the line on our expenditures, we don't need to raise the fee. But if we're not gonna hold the line and and everything I've heard is certain security is holding the line on expense for that line item or those line items. If that's not true, I'd like to know that. Well, we, we but don't. if we're raising the the fee, the cost in other line items, and that's going to drive an increase in our fees, we need to disclose that. Or we at least need to. The five of us need to be on the same page about that. Oh, I think we're mixing apples and oranges here for a second. So let me see if I can try and clarify it. Um, as we've been talking about, if the board makes a decision at your May meeting 
that you're going to raise assessments for whatever the reason is, then we do need to do a mailed notice to all of the residents about the public hearing, which will most likely be in either July or August. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the discussion was, if we're going to mail out a survey for security, perhaps we'll shove it in the envelope with that mailed notice if we are raising assessments. So, or you could do a separate mailing and mail it out so my tomorrow. So question is, are because I I didn't I wasn't at a board meeting and I I know I missed the last one, but I don't think I read in the minutes that we're wedded to an assessment increase. There there and there has therefore, been. Therefore, how can we communicate that we're going to raise assessments when we mail out the survey? You're not. You're not. You're not. And, and, and I, then I'm totally confused. About right. Let, let me try. Let me try and clarify. Um, that the, the board has had a discussion that it may be something coming down the line, but no decisions have been made yet about a budget. Those decisions will be made, as we've been repeating tonight, in May. Okay. Um, the discussion was that perhaps holding, not mailing this survey until after that May meeting, shoving it in the same envelope if you are, in fact, raising assessments. So that would be... Or... or you could just mail it now and have it stand alone and do its own thing. Well, you, I mean, what, you, what you said, though, that would not be until after the April meeting. May, if you shoved it so in the same we're not envelope. not going to send that out until after the May meeting. That's the discussion we're having now. Do, do you wait till then so that you could save money on mailing costs if you're raising your assessment, okay? Um, and shove it in the same envelope, or do you just stand alone, decide we want to send it out, you know, tomorrow morning and pay the mailing cost. Well, I got the impression we wanted to send this survey out soon. No, no. okay. Yeah, that's why I proposed an intermittent yeah. solution. Okay, so how are we going to decide on the, 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 the security solution if we don't have the will of the people, the voice of the people? That's why we're waiting for the survey at Denny's suggestion. But we're not talking about sending the survey out till May. Understood. And here is we're in March. That's why I propose okay. changing the code so now on a roaming situation to offer some sort of And are we going to have solution. a discussion about security be among the five of us before that? It'll be an ongoing discussion as, as things occur, but right okay. now we, it was proposed that we get the survey before anything was pursued. Okay. And it's not a rush. That's why we're offering interim solutions while we see how things get returned. And we are getting a lot of feedback from residents with different ideas continually. Okay. But one thing we absolutely must do is make Allied perform the way that we have... I have contact with Allied. You know, and that in, if that means a change in uniforms, if that means that the guard has to stand for eight hours instead of sit down and put his feet up. Um, those are all things we need to do. Uh, that's at the extreme. Of do, do we have a camera on the guard? <laughs> that, would be, that would be kind of uh, almost pointless because you just turn it. I just want to make something clear. I, there, there's too many rumors going on about these guards, and I'm going to stick up for them right now because I'm, I'm, I, I have it about myself going on, rumors that are, keep going on at Facebook. This Facebook stuff is a bunch of BS. It is false news. I, I, I'm, I'm to the point where I'm, right now I'm listening to it. I'm, I'm kind of ticked off about it because the guards are not out there putting their feet up. The, I, go, I communicate with them all the time. They know they are under constant surveillance. They are not going to be... They are, Correct. That that is not true. So I'm they lying. Are, that I witnessed. You you witnessed their, their feet up on the I desk. I witnessed his hat on backwards with his feet up on a desk. This is not. I'm a, well, this well, is, but uh, it, let me. If if we board members if, one at a time. Board if members we have a contract with them, why can't we make them do what we want them to do? We don't completely. Force, month, month force the issue, write, write the post orders, whatever way they are. When you find somebody or a resident indicates that they witnessed this, it gets back to Ed or Grant, and we get a hold of Allied, and we say, get rid of them. Or, or you put them on a one time, you failed, you're gone. I mean, manage, manage the process. 
with, that we have until it doesn't work at all, and then make changes if you need to. Since I've been in contact with Jerry, there have been improvements. I wouldn't say they're across the board 100%, but there have been improvements. He wasn't even aware we had post orders or that they weren't being followed. Jerry Cushing? I, I wasn't involved in the process, so I can't call him a liar, but... Dozens of Understood. That's, that's why I asked him, that's why I asked him to review. I would say shame on us if we're, not, if we're not managing them the way we want them to be managed. With a contract that we have for them, for the kind of money we're paying, we should get exactly what we want, when we want it, how we want it. And if we don't, then you change. Or yet you have a month-to-month -month process right now. So, and he wants to go on a contract. We want to get somebody on a contract. Okay, so let's just say, hey, here's what you're required to do, and force him to do it. So, board, you're still under this same topic on security. I, what I will do, board members, is I can send, if you want to take a look at this and if you have any revisions or any additions to this, please submit them to me for the April meeting. I can bring a draft, I can bring the revised copy back once I receive, I'll send out my takeaway items tomorrow like I do, and in that it'll p have directions on there for you guys to send in to me any revisions and I'll send you a Word document form of the letter. You guys can take a look at that, revise it any way you'd like, I'll compile all the edits and I'll even do, if it's drastic differences, I'll make separate versions and put them at the top for you to review for the April meeting. Yes, sounds good. Any other topic, any other discussions on this topic at this time, board members, before we move forward? Developer punch list items. We discussed phase 5B turnover. Jim, you're going to be discussing that. I'm also going to provide to you as well the ongoing punch list items as well so you can bring that up to them. There should... Denny, if you, if you refresh my memory, I don't, he lit all the monuments. Um, we did all his Mitch Fly treatments. I forget, what are we waiting on from Richard besides the phase 5B turnover and obviously some of well, the issues we have? Bridge there's, to there, Nowhere. There's some, there's some issues Jim has, the Bridge to Nowhere, which when I spoke to him, he said he was not obligated to do anything with that. He said, I don't have to do that. So unless somebody can, is, can some, attorney, some attorney or somebody can get, find out that he is obligated to do it, then it's, he's not going to do anything for it. Uh, I don't know. Is that part of 5B? Because I don't know that it is. I, I it's, it, it's behind, I don't know if it's it's behind of, Chantilly, but not the other side. And it's in, isn't it in, in his site plan? I'd have to double check. I yeah, believe I, it is. Everything that I've seen, it's in the site plan. Yeah. But board members, what I want you to be aware of is if Jim having this meeting on Monday, I want you guys to give him anything you have for Richard at this time, because this is the only time all five of you will be together before he sees Richard. So anything you think you want him to speak with the developer on on Monday, please hash that out at this time. Obviously, any kind of ir uh, not irrigation issues, any kind of aeration issues in those two ponds because they're horrible. Okay. The two new uh, ponds. The new two new ponds. Yeah. Um, anything having to do with uh, paths that are supposed to go through there. Um, I know at the back end of that area, there's a open gate that you can yep. just walk through and get through if you're over in Gates Creek. You could ride bicycles, motorcycles through there. Yeah, I know. I've been back there. And, and I think Ed's also concerned with some of the irrigation and planting along that wall. There's no mulch, the trees, the plants, everything is, I mean, Jim, when we looked at it, I mean, you've seen it, it was, it was awful. Yeah, I know, it's horrible back there. It's it's just, still has not, just has wasn't, addressed. was never finished. Is he obligated to put additional plantings back in there? I mean, once again, Brazilian peppers, Malaluca trees, stuff that is it all cleared out the way it needs to be cleared out, and you've got to get Shapiker to go with you. He should be with you. He is, he is going Monday. to be. Okay. It's going to be, it's going to be Jim. Richard, Ed, Dean Pacwa is with, Kimley Horn is Richard's personal engineer that he uses for all of his development sites. 
And then either Richard typically goes himself. I anticipate that Richard will be there Monday afternoon. So that'll be the that'll be the individuals that are present. And board members, if you can think of anything prior to Monday, submit them to me. I'll submit them to Jim. But keep in mind that that meeting's Monday afternoon. It's not like we're gonna never talk to Richard again. But it's nice that it's gonna be that group together. Yes. You gonna. Are you going to propose to him what we would request on the gates at the same time? I would say, what? Because you know. No, I, here I'll take care. I'll take care of the gates separately. I'll take. I'll. I'll wait till after Monday. After Monday, that's my suggestion. After Monday. Maybe I'll, I'll. Maybe I'll visit his office and do it sometime next week and do it in person. Andy, is there any chance that your uh, your girl doing the research on the DO will have any? Anything? Okay. I mean, I you're going to have a follow-up conversation. I anticipate yeah, after uh, Monday. So. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to accept. Yeah. You know, the the property on a on a promise. Understood. Once again, board members, if you had anything else before Monday, let me know as well. I'll talk to Richard after I speak with Jim and everybody after their on-site meeting on Monday, and then I'll bring up the uh, construction traffic only coming through the one gate with him next week. Probably, probably first yeah. Tuesday morning, I'll send him a calendar invite for a conference call. <laughs> next, up, uh, <laughs> next up is CD, I'll be happy to do that, CD amenity item additions. We talked about, Mark, you're going to work with Ed on the play and spray. Is there anything else you'd like to see prior to next month? Uh, like I requested, the, I, th I know you sent out an email to everybody to uh, develop things that they would like to see on a master list, a master plan, and where you know, and then we can start to use those to prioritize things that we might want to get done in the future. And that can include anything like improvements to landscape in certain areas, uh, addition of uh, irrigation, all that kind of stuff. This is a blank slate, right? Yes. Blank slate. What I would, yes, what I would encourage you to do is anything that you want to see in that master plan based off my email yesterday, submit to me. I'll do it similar to what I was talking about with the revised security letter. I'll compile it all in the one and I'll slap it on the April And agenda. once we get it all compiled, we can prioritize it and put costs associated yeah, well, with it. Getting costs. Because that will also help it. you with your determination on whether we yes. run a raise fees. And, and, it, what, and what we need, what we're going to do with the money. Yep. And this is good to do now because, as we discussed earlier in the meeting, your May meeting is your proposed budget. So if you have your amenity items cost and you rank them, what priority you want to get done in fiscal year 1920, you can look at that in May and say, hey, we're doing the play and spray, and we're going to do one other big project in 20, 1920. And that list will be able to show you exactly what that will be, and then we'll have costs for that for May. The last item, Jeff, I apologize. I left the action item list on the printer, so I'm going to send it out to you tomorrow via email. I apologize. The last item would be supervisor request. We can start with Jim. No, I don't have anything right Lindsay? now. Just a complete information for the week we made a decision on the play and spray. Yes, ma'am. Uh, information on the play and spray so we can make a decision. We'll have that for April, and we'll make sure that that's complete and detailed. Mark? Basketball and tennis court resurfacing. Mike. Basketball and tennis court resurfacing was what Mark mentioned. Denny? Nothing. Jeff? If there's nothing further, then board members will be seeking a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion by Denny, second by Jim. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Consider this meeting adjourned at 754.